What's going on YouTube today? We're going to talk about local potato. Local potato is one of the very recent disclosed public vulnerabilities. As you can see, that's the identifier CVE 2023. And today we're going to talk about this vulnerability, how it works, what do we need to perform a proof of concept, as long as, uh, sorry, in addition to the detection and mitigation. So let's get started and briefly talk about how this vulnerability works. Okay, the first thing to note about this vulnerability is that first it is disclosed with a proof of concept to work on Windows operating system. So it works only on Windows. That's the only thing. That's the first thing to know. The other thing to know is that this vulnerability exploits a mechanism in NTLM authentication. So NTLM authentication is a mechanism of authentication used predominantly and widely in Windows operating systems. So the major flaw is that the vulnerability exploits or the major flaw lies in the NTLM authentication. Once there is a flaw in the NTLM authentication, then local potato will work on any system. Okay. Now, the other thing or the third thing to know about this is that when there is a flaw in the NTLM authentication, when we deploy or when we um, run the local potato exploit, what's going to happen is that it's going to use a privileged process. So let me use shortcuts, privileged process. A privileged process is any process that runs under system user. So we call this a privileged process. So local potato will use or trick a privileged process into launching a session. Now, in today's scenario, we're going to take an example of an SMB server. Because SMB server is the least challenging protocol. So SMB, or it could use HTTP. It could use DNS. It could use other protocols, FTP. So it will trick that privileged process in Windows, no matter what the process is, as long as it's running under the system user. It will trick it to launch a session against the available local server. In this scenario, it's going to be the SMB server. So once we do that, once that is done, the attacker will be able to connect to that server. In this case, it's SMB server to be able to list all the shares and have admin privilege. What are the impacts? So once the exploit or once the vulnerability is exploited, okay, what's going to happen is that the attacker will be able to do two things. Write, write files or read files. As what? As the system user, as system. okay that's in brief how it works now of course windows or microsoft has released a patch for this vulnerability make sure your windows is up to date to avoid being hacked now that's what we can accomplish with local potato we can have write or read privileges on the system it means we can read sensitive files and we can write sensitive files but how can we pivot from that into an administrator user so far we did not achieve the uh, objective of routing the system right so we want to root the system we want to have admin access reading or writing files as ad a system is very much appreciated it is helpful but it's not sufficient so what we're going to use we're going to uh, kind of add or use this method which is exploiting the storage service store svc is a storage service by dll hijacking so what what can we do here we can edit or we can create our own dll okay and then given that with local potato we can write files as system we can create our own dll write that dll or modify an existing dll and then achieve remote code execution through what? Through this method, store SVC and or storage servers and DLL hijacking. So how it works. So basically what do we need here? We need two items. 
to make this work. So if we want to go this path, we have first, we need a DLL. The DLL name or goes by the name Sprint csb.dll now this dll is very much needed if we want to make calls to or by using the storage service so the storage service by default uh, when it is used or when it is invoked it's actually using it uses this dll now if dll if that dll is missing all right or what we can do if it is not missing, we can write our own version of this DLL and replace it. And replace the old or the existing version in Windows with our own version. Now, typically, Sprint CSP DLL exists under a Windows System 32. When we invoke storage service, it loads that DLL. If we can create our own version of Sprint csp uh, and then replace the existing one with our own we can achieve the first item or we can mark check mark the first item the other item that we need is the remote procedure call right client and it is necessary we have that executable because that's the executable that will make the or that will invoke the call to the storage service which in turn um, loads the DLL now given that with local potato we can write files as system we can write our own version of the DLL in this path here and then make the remote procedure call so that when we invoke that service right we invoke our own DLL here sprint csp DLL and given that we actually created that DLL to elevate the privileges for example adding the user into an administrator group we will be able to combine local potato with this method to achieve system privileges. Now let's see how this works in action in a ready machine from TryHackMe. Okay, so that's the machine here and that's the room by the way. So this is the machine. What we're going to do, as you can see, all of the uh, tools we need are available under uh, C tools and you can download them from here, local potato from this GitHub. I'm going to put the link in the video description. So the first thing we need to do, guys, as said earlier, we need to modify the DLL. So we go to this directory, click on Sprint CSP, and then we have the main.c. We're going to edit this one with Notepad and change how the DLL works. So basically, we're going to locate the do stuff function, and instead of uh, in the line that points to create process, as you can see. The line indicates that a command prompt will be run, execute who am I, and then store the output under program data, specifically under or inside who am I all the text file. Okay. Now, what we are going to do, we're going to change this. All right. And we're going to go back here first, take a look at the user. We're going to add the existing user into administrator group. So the username is user. We're going to add this to the administrator group so that instead of issuing who am I, we're going to actually add the user into administrator group, thus elevating the privileges. So keep this as is, running the command prompt, and then slash C. So here, who am I? We're going to say net local group administrators user slash add and we're going to cancel everything after this way we make the dll okay the malicious dll we make that dll add the user into administrator the administrator group save that and the last thing is we need to compile it so we're going to open the developer command prompt. It's very crucial, guys, to use that version of the command prompt, not the regular version, because the tools needed to compile the uh, files are only exist or only stored under developer command prompt. So cd c tools. Okay. Now cd to lpe cd sprint. 
cd again sprint okay so we have main.c and we have other files filters user okay let's go back now we're going to compile this file so we're going to type ms build sprint dot sln now if you have done everything correctly you're not going to receive any errors okay dir as you can see we will have a new directory created which is x64 i forgot one thing which is the thing that you guys ask me always to do as you know we have to make this a bit bigger okay so x64 a newly created directory cd x64 and then cd debug and we're going to move um, sprint the dll we created we're going to move that to desktop so see users user desktop so one file moved that's good now next we need to create or compile the existing version of the rpc client so to do that we're going to go back 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 okay so local potato yeah back again to lpe so rpc client we're going to need to compile this file but before we do that we have to make sure that the file is compiled to work on windows 2019 the current version we are using so we go to that directory rpc client and then we locate storage service as you can see c.c right click edit with notepad and then we're going to comment on this line where it says windows 10 our own system that we're going to execute the exploit against it 2000 windows 2019 so it's enough we remove the comment from here and we save the file going back now we compile this if everything is done correctly no errors will be seen in the output okay dir cd x64 dir cd debug dr and that's the file we're going to move this file into the desktop it's users user desktop okay now everything is ready to launch the exploit so we have the rpc client and we have the dll now we're going to first the first thing we have to do guys is to move or use local potato as i said earlier this exploit will make us or will enable us to move this file into the system windows system 32 so if we don't do that we're not we'll the, we're not going to be able to load the malicious dll we created that deal needs to be needs to be stored in one of the path uh, directories so to do that we're going to use the local potato exploit as said earlier because the current privileges of the user don't let us move this file into that directory that directory is privileged only privileged users such as administrators are able to copy to files to that directory since the purpose of local potato is to make us able to write files as admin we're going to use this fact so cd to uh, users user desktop and then we're going to use local potato dash i that's the exploit move the dll into this location windows system 32 
nope, sprint csv.dll. So as you can see, we move the file to that location. And as you can see, the file has been moved successfully and the exploit has been executed, which means we were able to move this DLL into that location using a privileged process. Now, the next thing to do, guys, is to what? Is to launch the remote procedure call. So, remote procedure call. When we do that, it's going, as I said earlier, to make a call to invoke the storage service, which in turn will load that DLL, which as if you know, guys, which what we did earlier, we modified this DLL to add the current user to the administrator group, therefore successfully elevating the privileges. Execute. DL hijack triggered. Now let's check on the user net user user. And as you can see, the user now is part of local group memberships, only remote users, no administrators. So it seems like we have we haven't uh, exploded that successfully. Let's go back to tools and sprint edit on this one. Aha, uh -huh, we have a typo here. Not O, oh, it's P. So let's fix the typo. And um, let's delete this file or this directory all together. Delete the DLL. And then, well, that's shameful because the typos are not accepted in the scenario. So we have to go back again to see tools so ms build sprint sln six warnings zero errors okay move oh wait CD x64 CD debug move to C users or users okay so now CD2 this path Execute the local potato one more time. Run the remote procedure call executable. Net user user. Wanna check on, on the user? Okay, no need for that because it's gonna take forever. Net user user. And as you can see now, the user is part of the administrator's group. What we're going to do to make sure that we got this successfully, we're going to close this one and launch the command prompt as administrator. Select more choices, user, put the password. The password is P uppercase password123. And this is successful. So we execute as the system account. So CD to, um, Wait, let's go back, extract the flag, see the users, administrator, desktop, type, flag, and that's it. That's your flag. So that's the challenge is finished, guys. Now, if you want to read more about the detection and mitigation, there are two ways. The first one is using Sigma, the generic signature language we talked about in the previous videos. Or you can use Yara rules with the artifacts of the exploit to prevent it from happening. So that was it guys for today. I hope you like that and I will see you in the next video.